Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how I do my portraits because the other day I posted a few uh, self-portraits on my Instagram and Flickr and, and I got a lot of compliments on those, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, but uh, some of you had asked me, you know, how did I do those pictures? You know, what was my setup and my settings, etc. So uh, before I take everything down, I thought I'd just make a video about how I took those pictures. Uh, so basically I'll start with the, the gear that I used and then also um, you know the settings and then we'll take a couple shots and then I'll show you what I did in post-processing with Photoshop. Alright so behind me is my entire lighting setup. Uh, basically I have three flashes right. I have a Godox TT350 down here and this is just on a, uh, a little selfie stick uh, with the umbrella attached and you know very simple. And then over here I have a 72 inch light stand with my Godox uh, V1 uh, round head flash and the umbrella and this uh, again another 36 inch umbrella and then over here this is just a uh, 36 inch reflector white reflector this is one of those like five in ones where you know the other side is gold and then I think there's silver and black and so I don't know I just use the white <laughs> side and then my most recent purchase and then my most recent purchase is actually this 5x7 gray drop back. And this is just a cloth and it comes with a stand. And this whole thing, everything actually collapses down to about this size. And I can carry it in one little bag. And I'll show you that at the end when I take everything down. Uh, but let me show you the, the third flash. And that is uh, right up here is my Godox uh, 8200 just pointed at the ceiling on another 72 inch light stand. All right now for the camera basically I'm using the M1 Mark III with the uh, Godox uh, actually this is a Flashpoint brand but this is a Godox uh, radio trigger and uh, the 45 millimeter f1.8 uh, prime lens and then this is just a uh, remote trigger for me to fire the flash because I'll be doing the self portraits. All right, and that's pretty much all of the gear and accessories that are gonna be needed for this shoot. And you can substitute really any flash system uh, with the one I'm using. I could probably even get away with like three small TT350s in a space like this. But in any case, let's go over to uh, where I set up the lights and why I set them where they are. All right, so basically I'm gonna be standing um, roughly about right here. And I have my main key light here set up, pointing down to give me sort of some uh, Rembrandt type lighting, nice shadows on this side. But I also have my reflector set up here because I don't want the shadows to be too dark or too harsh from this light. So I set up this reflector here to bounce a little bit of light off the key light to fill in some shadows. Uh, but to that end, I've also added a second light down here uh, for fill in light pointing up at me so that it'll fill in the shadows under my chin and under my nose uh, to get rid of any kind of harsh shadows there. Uh, now if I were using a much bigger umbrella uh, I may not need a second fill light down here but since I'm using two small umbrellas I've set up two lights and this is called sometimes I think like butterfly lighting I'm not really sure but uh, I've seen it done <laughs> so I just copied it uh, and then Finally, I have the one light back here, uh, the 8200 pointing at the ceiling. So that's gonna fire at the ceiling and bounce the light back down onto my head and onto my shoulders to kind of give me some rim lighting. And I've seen alternative lighting setups where people set up the flash directly behind the model uh, with a grid to do the kind of the same thing. But uh, I found this works just as well for me. Um, all right, now, a couple of notes though is with this this with this light here I always like to have this one about halfway to my face in terms of level and if I were a little taller or a little shorter I would adjust the light stand height accordingly um, or if I was sitting down for example uh, but what this does is it gives um, uh, it allows for the light to be seen in the eye so you get that catch light in the model's eyes because if it's too high you're not going to get the catch light uh, sometimes so I like to make sure it's just low enough right about here so that I get the catch light and sometimes the uh, fill light down here will also give me a second catch light from underneath and also I want to make a note about the uh, the umbrella itself 
Now notice that I have it extended all the way out as far as I can because I want the light from the flash to spread as much as possible before it hits the umbrella. Uh, this helps minimize any hot spots in the, uh, in the lighting uh, because if I had the flash too close to the umbrella, um, I'll get a real hot spot up here and the light's not going to spread as evenly. Um, now, in a small space like this, it's not as big a deal, uh, but it's always good practice to try and set up your flash so that it spreads as much as possible inside the umbrella. And what I had to do for my um, fill light down here is I'm using actually this little plastic uh, Stofen filter which spreads the light. So I don't have to extend the umbrella all the way out. All I have to do is make sure the umbrella is about even with the flash so that the Stofen filter starts to spread the light all the way around inside the umbrella. So I don't, I don't have to extend the, light, the umbrella all the way out for this one since I'm using that little uh, Stofen cap or filter. And then the last thing I do before I start doing any shooting is I turn off as many of the lights as I can or I close all of the windows and blinds if I can if there's any light outside uh, to minimize you know, light pollution uh, because I don't want any of the natural ambient light coming in to the shot. The only light I want is the light I'll be creating myself using the flashes. Uh, because ambient light can cause problems, uh, not just with maybe creating shadows where they shouldn't be, right? Um, but also with white balance, because the lighting in here, I have two different kinds of light. I have tungsten lighting out here in the living room, and then I have like normal daylight lighting there in the dining room. And if it was in the daytime, I'd have more daylight coming in through the windows. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the, uh, the lighting in the dining room before I start shooting. And I don't want it to be too dark uh, so that people can't see where they're going or uh, so dark that the camera's not able to focus. So, um, but I'll, I'll be able to crush what little ambient light is left very easily. And you'll see that when we start shooting. Now, speaking of white balance, there's a few ways to do this. The wrong way really is to set the uh, camera white balance to flash because I'm using these uh, shoot through umbrellas and I'm also bouncing one of the flashes off the ceiling, that can create sort of a color cast onto the subject and you won't have a true white balance or true flash white balance. Uh, the other way is really, you know, to shoot with a gray card in front of your model to sort of set the white balance for each shot or whenever you change your lighting. And another way is you can set a custom white balance in the camera uh, because I'm using a neutral gray backdrop, after I have my lighting set up and all my settings, I can take a picture of the neutral gray background and then use that as the custom white balance in the camera. And believe it or not, I found that to actually pretty, be uh, pretty accurate as well. All right, so for the first shot, I'm just going to make it simple and let the camera do all the work. So I'm going to set it into aperture priority and then set the uh, flashes to TTL so that the camera calculates all of the lighting it needs. And I'm going to start with just one flash, the, uh, the key light first, and then we'll add the additional lighting, uh, the fill light and the ceiling light, and do this all in TTL and see how those images look straight out of camera. All right, so let's go ahead and take a few pictures. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let the camera do all the work. So I'm going to just set it an aperture priority and set the flashes to uh, TTL. But I'm going to start with just one flash only, uh, the main key light. Uh, but before I even take the first picture, I'm going to go ahead and set the white balance. So what I'm going to do is um, set it an aperture priority. We'll do um, F2 and uh, put the flash in TTL mode via the trigger and fill the frame with the gray backdrop and take a picture to set the white balance. So let's go ahead into the camera. Let's go to white balance, hit the info button and take a picture. And it's asked me, do I want to confirm? I say yes. Okay. Now the white balance is set for one flash, the key light. Let's go ahead and take a picture. And I'll flip the screen up so I can frame myself. And when I'm framing myself, I want to just make sure that obviously none of the umbrellas are in the frame uh, or this reflector. The only thing I want in the frame is myself and the backdrop. So 
So with the test shot, I'm looking for a couple of things. I want to make sure that I do have the catch light in my eyes, which uh, that looks pretty good. And uh, I want to see how the lighting's hitting. And yeah, I like it. I think that came out pretty good. All right, now let's turn on the uh, fill light down here um, using TTL mode. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that on. So I hit the B button, change the mode to TTL. And let's, uh, let's set the white balance again. I mean, it shouldn't change, but it doesn't hurt. Yeah. It actually dropped about 100. It's 5,700 now. Okay, let's take another picture. Oops. I need, to, uh, I need to flip this up so I can see myself. Okay. All right, so that made very, very little difference. And I can just barely see the second catch light in my eyes. So basically the camera relied on the key light flash for most of the light and just, just barely touched the uh, fill light. But let's go ahead and add the third light in. So I'm just gonna say C, manual mode, or I'm sorry, TTL mode. And then let's do another white balance adjustment. Info, take a picture. <clears throat> Oops, let me t need to turn this flash on. There. <laughs> Forgot to turn the flash on. All right, let's try again. Info. All right, good. All right, let's take a shot there. All right, um, now that time, it looks like the fl uh, camera, when I put all three flashes on TTL, relied primarily on the AD200 for most of the lighting and didn't use much of the key lighting or the fill-in flash. So as you can see, the last shot really wasn't very good when we had everything set on basically full automatic. Uh, another problem, and it probably not gonna happen in here, but the shutter speed was at 1 60th of a second, and that can cause problems with ambient light and white balance issues as well. But uh, let's go ahead and take full control of the camera. So I'm gonna put the camera into manual mode and I'm gonna control all of the flashes manually as well. And um, I'll kind of walk you through step-by-step step those settings, but it's not, it's not hard, it's very easy. So let's go ahead and put the camera into manual mode. And then all I have to do is put the shutter speed to 1 250th of a second, which is the uh, sync speed for this camera. Uh, if your flash sync's a little different, just set it to whatever the maximum is. Uh, but it's either 1 200th or 1 250th, the most modern cameras. And then the aperture, let me just double check, is F2 and ISO is fixed to ISO 200. So we've locked the ISO to 200. We have the uh, aperture at F2 and shutter speed at 1 250th, I think. Yes. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the radio trigger and take a picture and make sure that I don't have any ambient light coming in with these settings. So I'm going to take a picture. Oh, let me go stand in place. So as you can see, that shot was completely black, uh, which is exactly what I want. I don't want any ambient light coming in uh, using the settings that I did in full manual before I start adding flash. Um, now, you'll kind of get this with experience, but in a small room like this, and it's not very bright, I'm gonna set all of the flashes to a fairly low power, like 1 64th, just to start. But I'm gonna start with just one flash, the key light, and see how that looks at 1 64th power. 
And I'm not going to worry about light balance now because we're just adjusting the flash power now so we get the lighting that I want. So let's go ahead and turn the trigger back on. And I'm going to turn flash B off. Flash C off, which is the uh, rim lighting. And let's go back to flash A. It's in TTL mode. We're going to put it in manual mode. And I'm going to set the power all the way down to 1 64th uh, power. And we'll see how that looks. Well, that sucks. I dropped the uh, remote trigger and it broke. So I just went on Amazon ordered another one. But anyway, let's go ahead and do a test shot at uh, with just one flash. And again, I'm not worried about white balance. And I'll just leave it at 1 64th power and let's do a test shot here. So what I'm going to check for here again is the same things. I'm going to make sure that I got the catch light in my eye and there's nothing blown out. And yeah, that exposure looks pretty good. About spot on right at 164. All right, now let's go ahead and add the fill light in. Now the fill light is about, you know, half the power of the key light. Uh, so I'm going to actually, instead of 1 64th, I'm going to set it to 1 32nd power and see what I get. So let's put it in manual mode. And there we go, 1 32nd. And let's see how that looks now. That's not bad. I'm going to turn it down just maybe a third of a stop. I feel like there's just a little bit too much light coming up under my chin, which is partially from my white collar, but we can turn it down just a third of a stop. So we're at 1 64th plus 0.07. Let's do another test shot. Okay, that's better. I like how it filled in the lighting at the bottom with my hands and things. It's not too bright. It's just still the light falls off nicely, I think, so we get a little more depth. Uh, let's go ahead and add the rim lighting. So go to flash C, set that to manual, and we're going to turn this down to 1 64th. Right. Let's go ahead and do a test shot. I like the way the light's falling onto my shoulders now. But it's a little bit too strong, so I'm going to turn it down. Let's see, we're at 1 64th. I'm going to turn it down to 1 1 28th, so the minimum power. Let's do one more. All right, that's better. Perfect. Now, if 1 1 28th was still too bright, all I'd have to do is lower the flash uh, away from the ceiling more, and the light will spread out more. Uh, reducing the overall effect. Now, let's go ahead and set the white balance with the lighting set up the way it is. So I'll go into white balance, take a picture, say OK. And one more test shot to see how that looks. All right, I think that looks really good. Um, now, let's do uh, one using the pinhole art filter to add a little bit of a vignette, and it also will shift the color to look a little more, look a little more cinematic. So, uh, so I found pinhole filter number two looks really good. All right, so now I'm going to do one more shot. It's just a head shot. So all I have to do is bring the camera closer. So let's come in about this far. And I don't have to change any settings. All I did was move the camera. Okay. All right, that looks good. All 
All right, so those weren't bad for straight out of camera JPEGs. Now let's go into Photoshop and do a little touch up and maybe change some of the backgrounds to something maybe more appropriate to go with my uh, Star Trek uniform. All right, so I've imported all the images. Um, let's just work with the raw images. And these are the last two that I took. So let's uh, take a look at these. Yeah, we nailed focus there, at least the camera did. But I do want to get a little rid of this shine here on my forehead and under my eye a little bit, maybe my chin. And there's a little bit of a reflection here of my white collar under my chin as well. So let's see if we can fix these things real quick. Um, so let's go into develop module. And I'm going to use the healing brush. Let me adjust the size. So opacity, let's do 40%. Feathering is about right. Okay, let's zoom in here. And just get rid of this shine right there. Let's see. Um, yeah, that's good. We'll pull from an area that doesn't have any shine on it. Let's reduce the opacity a little bit more. Okay, good. Not bad. All right, let's uh, let's go down here, and there's a little bit of shine here on my nose. Get rid of that. And just a little bit under my eye. Move this down here. There. And then let's go to my chin. Let's pick a spot over here. Oh, uh, just a little bit more. Yeah, about 40. Okay, good. And then just under my chin, there's a little bit of a reflection here off my collar, here and here. So let's see if we can fix some of that. Let's do this one. Okay, and then this, let me feather a little bit more. Where's that pulling from? Let's pull from over here. Maybe a little more opacity. Uh, let's try clone. Nope. Let's back off and see how that looks. Still a little bit of shine there. Let's do it with... Um, Yeah, let's reduce the highlights a little bit. Okay, good. And I think that's all I need to do here. All right, let's export this into Lightroom. I'm sorry, let's export into Photoshop. And what I want to do here is uh, change the background. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just duplicate this layer with a control J. And then I'm going to mask out all of this gray. So I'm going to select the uh, masking tool here, the quick selection tool, and do select subject. And yeah, that's pretty good. So we'll click the masking button to add that. And now uh, let's find a good background. All right, there's a uh, background that I use sometimes in my live streams. Let's see. Uh, yeah, maybe this one. I like this one. Let's use this one. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this over to Photoshop like so. And hopefully that'll come in. And I'll say OK. All right, wow, that's really small, but let's see how it looks. So let's make this bigger. All 
All right, that's good. Now let me just drag this down to the layer underneath. And um, let me zoom in a little bit. OK, so there's a tiny bit of halo around the edges here from the masking. So I'm just going to go to the masking layer. And let me change my brush a little smaller. And let me just, whoops. Let me select the brush, and I'm going to use the black brush here, like so, and just clean this up a little bit. Make sure my hardness is down. Get rid of that stray hair. Maybe that hair. Yeah, that looks pretty good. A little bit more over here, maybe. All right. Um, now the background is not very sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blur it a little bit more. So I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Oh, I don't need to do that. I can I can mess with the image directly. Let's do a uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Ooh, that's too much. Let's back that off. And I have preview checked, so I can see it in real time. Yeah, like something like that looks good. All right. I save that. And there's the final image. All right, let's do the full length shot real quick. So let me go into develop module and let's fix some of the shine. With the heel brush, turn the opacity down to about 30. And just, just touch right there. Maybe a little bit more. OK. And then under the eye, just a little bit. And then the chin a little bit and then we'll just uh, reduce the highlights here maybe a little more okay and we'll export to Photoshop All right, here in Photoshop, we'll do the same thing. We'll just create a duplicate layer. And uh, go ahead and select Subject. Add the mask. And for this background, Why don't we add, let's see, do we have something kind of tall? Oh, yeah, how about the transporters? All right, let's try this one. We'll just move this down a little bit. All right. I'm going to drag it down here. Same thing. We'll just add a little bit of blur. What is a filter? There we go. Gaussian blur. And let's just check the, the edges. Yeah, just a little bit adjustment on the edges. So I'll click the masking layer. Check my brush is soft. 
and we're using a black brush and whoops let's go to black and let's just brush out some of this extra hair and this little bit of halo Oops, too much. Made it a little bit harder brush. There we go. Um, yeah, definitely front focused a tiny bit there. But... Um, now the white balance is a little bit warmer in the background, so I'm just going to add, definitely going to add an adjustment layer this time. So let's do hue, no, color balance, right? So let's, uh, yeah, there we go. A little bit of magenta. Now I look a little bit more natural in there. Okay, good. We'll save that. And go back to Lightroom. And there's the second image. Now, I know I went through all of that pretty quickly, and I made some assumptions that you're already fairly familiar with Lightroom and Photoshop and how to use your camera and do these settings. Uh, if you'd like me to go into more detailed videos about how to set up the flashes uh, using that particular trigger and those flashes, just let me know in the comments below. But either way, I hope you liked this video. If you did, consider subscribing, maybe hit the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or make a donation. There's links below. But either way, I appreciate you watching, and hopefully we'll see you again soon.